Up until a few years ago, Mick Shannon would not normally be seen at the Cheltenham Festival. However, with a decent team of National Hunt horses now in his care, it is an event he is sure to become accustomed to. It all came about when he teamed up with his neighbour, the three-time Gold Cup winning trainer, Henrietta Knight. Mick, Henrietta, Cheltenham Festival just around the corner. Are you looking forward to it? Look at the trouble she's got me in already. All of, all of a sudden, the pressure that's on for Cheltenham. How did this partnership come about? Well, it was after I decided to stop training, well, just before I started to top, stop training, when Terry was very ill, and I realised I couldn't go on. And uh, we had some fantastic horses in the yard, mostly owned by um, Tim and Camilla Radford. And it was very important to find somewhere for them to go where I could keep an eye on them. And uh, they were near home. And they go on being trained in a similar way, really, to how we'd always train them. And so I thought of my neighbour here. <laughs> very kind of her. It was Terry's fault, really. We'd been friends for a long time. And... A long time. So you were, you were a good friend. You weren't a neighbour from hell, were and, um, and Terry was a tremendous friend of Mick's from a mm. long, long way back. So there was a relationship there that sort of came organically after you decided to, to retire, Hen? Mm, I thought about time Mick had some jumpers anyway. <laughs> well, it was very sad because, you know, once Terry had his, had his stroke, it was always going to be difficult then for Hen to think. And I'm really, I was just pleased to be able to help. And Tim has been, been absolutely fantastic. He's a real sort of sportsman, as you might say. And I mean, where Hen found him, I don't know. We could do with it. We could... Every trainer could do with with a hundred of them. Terry, Let's put it Terry, that way. Found, Terry found him. So there you go. See, mm. it's... did did Tim have a, a say in it, or did he leave it up to you, Hen? Well, we suggested it to Tim, and we introduced him to Mick, and he thought Mick was all right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're a tremendous friends. He still now. does while we're having the odd winner, you know. <laughs> but um, it was um, it was uh, it was very good because Terry still had a big input into the horses that are up here, mm. and he never even uh, though he was he couldn't walk around much and do much. He still, his mind was razor sharp, wasn't he? He still used to come over for a scotch. He used to bring him over for a scotch and we used to have some, you know, but uh, he, he never missed a thing right up to the end, so it was great. So, Hen, you and Terry were obviously still very involved in the day-to-day -day training of the horses, the involvement with the horses? We didn't, invo we didn't interfere with the actual training of the kick, getting them fit up here. Mm. I, people always used to say my horses were too big and fat and they were never really properly fit. And I know one thing, Mick gets his horses very, very fit. So I let him get them fit. She says they were fit and she, she, she won three gold cups with best mate. If they were fit enough, don't worry about that. Yeah, but they were trained half the time <laughs> on your gallops. <laughs> was it, for you, a, must have been a real privilege, I suppose, to have two sort of legends of the National Hunt game well, so involved a, with it? Uh, exactly, you know, I mean, it, and... Uh, as I said, we had, we had a lot of fun, you know, I mean, Terry was, you know, was a great character. We all know and the rest is history and, uh, you know, I mean, we, we had such a good time and, uh, you know, like I said, he used to come over and we used to, as I said, I always remember the days over at, uh, at Lockinge when me and him would sit in the car and, you know, heckle at everyone else who was doing all the schooling. And... Especially when your horses used to break all my wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think the great thing from my point of view is, is the quality of horses we've got, you know. We've, we've only got sort of nine jumpers over there and we're talking about four of them, possibly, you know, five of them, going, being able to, being good enough to run at Cheltenham. And, and that's what, that hasn't just happened. Hen and Terry have built that up, going to Ireland, finding the horses, you know, um, you know and it's taken years to put together. Do you, do you watch them school, Hen? Well, that's the part that she, I do. Look what she's just done to her leg. Eh? What do you think? This, was, this wasn't <laughs> bloody schooling. This was, was just falling in the duck pond. There's hospital, a few ponds out of the moment. Hospital reports that a 67-year-old lady fell into the duck pond chasing her geese. <laughs> Sounds like some lunatic. But you're still out there seeing them school and, and heavily involved in that side yeah, of things. Yeah, I do all the jumps training. Um, Mick does the, the actual fitness and I do the jumping with the help of the jockeys, obviously, who come over and ride them. And also we do a lot of jumping with them loose. We have a big loose jumping school. So I stand in the middle looking like a sort of ringmaster with a whip and the horses go round. You need a, a good jockey on board and, and you've got a, a cracking relationship with Dominic Ellsworth, who, who had, you had him ride for you for a long time. How did that all come about? Well, he used to ride when I trained and um, I like the way he rides because he's very good on young horses. And he was with Harvey Smith and he learned all the, um, the jumping 
from you know from the, from the from scratch, and he's he just got away with teaching young horses, and he seems to suit the horses that we have up here with Mick, um, the sort of the old-fashioned chasing types that have to take a bit of a slow development through the through the ranks. But I didn't think there was so much to to the jumping game as, and I realise now through Hen and Terry. You know how important Dominic is. You know what what a good horseman he is. If one if a jockey rides a one horse just for one race and one day, they don't understand the full picture. But he understands right from the start and what the future is going to be. And he obviously wants to look after those horses so he can continue to ride them. Terry was obviously was a great character. Mick, you've been described as a as a character once or twice, and and Dom's been described as a character of the weighing room. It's a sort of a nice atmosphere. It seems like a real team and a real team spirit. Well, it is. You know and. Uh, I mean, Dom used to spend a lot of time with Terry as well, you know, didn't they? You know, he was I mean, there the day Terry had his stroke. He helped me that day. Yeah. Did he? Yes, and he's, I mean, he, he really got on well with Terry. Good friends. Mm, best, best of friends. What's the future hold for, for you two in the operation here? Well, we just hope we have some continue with good owners well, like the Radfords and, and some more lovely young horses and win some proper races. That's right. We want to win at the Ch Cheltenham Festival, don't we? We need, we need a Cheltenham winner. And we need we need to win great group graded races. As simple as that. And, um, you know, Tim's put an awful lot of money into it, and uh, I think if that uh, you know we've waited a long time for these horses. We've been very patient. Last year we were, you know we were a lot of horses in the making. You know, bumper Knockhouse was a bumper. Warden Hill was a bumper last year. All winning their bumpers. Sergeant Reckless was. Now they've gone into the hurdle season. Next year's going to be a big year, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of chasers next year. You know, the chasers what I love. So it'll be fun next year. Cause Why the chases place. specifically? Because it's all about jumping. Um, and uh, you, don't, you win or lose races with jumping. So there is room for more if you want it. Maybe you can get some new, new chasers through the ranks. You, w I would love you, it. Would I you love take it more? Because the hard work's done by this lady here. You know. <laughs> but would you want more if, if Tim said, here's another five horses? Could you, could you accommodate oh, more horses? Oh, easily. Yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not a problem. We got there's always there's not a trainer in the country hasn't got room for a good horse. I'm telling you, you you go around and ask everyone, and, we and, I, and we're no different. We we want we want to be able to have horses that's good enough to go and. I'd love to find something like. I, I remember I used to watch Best Mate from a distance up the gallops. You know, we used to watch him go work. Go, he was a smashing horse, and Terry used to come over and we used to see him then. So working the horse today, boy, he said, you know, you go up round Gilbert's our gallop up there. It was, it was, it was an education just to see it, you know. What, what, what else did you did you learn from Terry, mate? <laughs> Quite well, a lot. <laughs> a lot of things what that we you can't learn from say. Terry? <laughs> a lot of unrepeatables. Well, I knew I knew Terry when he was at. Um, what it was what was the television channel? Uh, Ch Central, uh, Central. I think it was Central. Central Television. And you know, I was doing the World Cup and. Terry was doing everything else, you know, he was doing, you know... Uh, Gary Newborn. Yeah, yeah, it's a knockout and things, mm -hmm. that type of thing, you know, but he, with Gary Newborn and Trevor East, you know, all television people. And, you know, I got to know him then and, you know, really... And then when Hen and Terry got together, obviously used to see him a bit more because they, you know, and then it's just gone on from then. Mm. Clearly, you mentioned the best mate here, right? Hen, you've had some incredibly emotive Cheltenham festivals and because of the recent passing, the terrible loss, uh, the racing world experience when, when Terry passed away, this festival for you, for you Mick as well, will be an incredibly emotive one. What will it mean to you guys to have a Cheltenham festival winner this year? Well, it's what we've, it's what we've planned for the last two years. Since I, you know, I mean, that's the way I look at it. And, and knowing Hen, as I've said, I've been through what the horse, those young horses have done. And now, like three or four of them look as if they're going to turn up at, at Cheltenham. I don't think we'll have a winner, though. I don't think they're good enough. <laughs> She's a real pessimist. Spot the pessimist in the operation, <laughs> I was going to say. Well, but, I learned a lot of my game with Tim Forster, and he was always a pessimist. Mm, but I don't, but I don't see... There's so many good horses around, and I've, since I've uh, been in the house a lot more this winter, I've been watching all the televisions and all the programmes, and I think there's such good horses this year. I think difficult. there's good horses, but I think that also our horses will be competitive, and I think that's the main thing. You were, you were never a very good watcher of Best Mate when he was running. Can you at least enjoy it somewhat more now, watching Actually, the races? I, I was always forced to watch him every single fence because they stuck me in the press tent, and usually next to Mick Easterby, and I couldn't have much chance not to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever fall out, you two? We haven't ever fallen out yet. 
We've, uh, well, I wouldn't like to know what his, what his habits were. I don't know the personal side of him. <laughs> no, I don't. Listen, as I said, I think we know our bound... You know, what I'm trying to say is I don't pretend to know much about the, you know, the school inside of it and the jump inside of it. You know, I mean, but, I mean, if, uh, she's probably th two miles, three miles away as the crow flies. But you go around the road, it takes us, you know, it takes us about 30 minutes, doesn't mm. it? So it's minutes. perfect. Uh, 30 it? minutes? Yeah. How long is it? It didn't take me 30 minutes this evening. <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> Driving too fast. But as I say, you've broken the speed limit already with that bad leg. <laughs> but as I said, we, to send them back there is not a problem. And we send them over. She has them for a week schooling them. It freshens them up. They come back. And, you know, they're, they're different horses again. You know what I'm trying to say is that it's... I think it's good for the horses as well. It's very refreshing because Mick has a completely different uh, way of training horses and, and uh, it's a different light on the whole thing and we can discuss it. So you've learned things from, from each other? I've learned things from Mick and he says he's learned some things about the jumping yeah. from me, so it's oh. sort of, they complement each other. So you'd say it's a, a winning team? Well, I hope so. That's, that's what the, we that hope. Whole, that's the whole idea, let's put it that way.